Stem cell therapy is not exactly a new technology. It's been used for years in um, bone marrow transplants for leukemia patients. However, when you do a bone marrow transplant, it's using adult stem cells which have already differentiated themselves into a specific type of cell. More recently, scientists and doctors have found uses for embryonic stem cells which have yet to differentiate themselves and can essentially form into any specific cell. My claim is that um, embryonic stem cell therapy is vital because of its benefits to the medical uh, society, even though there have been ethical issues associated with the harvesting of embryonic stem cells. First, my, I will address the ethical issues associated with the harvesting of the stem cells. Second, I will show the medical benefits to disaster, trauma, and uh, medical disease patients. And third, I will show the um, importance in embryonic stem cell use in infertility patients. A majority of the ethical issue with embryonic stem cells comes from a mis misunderstanding of how they're harvested. Embryonic stem cells cannot come and do not come from aborted fetuses. They actually come from um, fertilized eggs that have to be four to five days old. By the time they reach the fetal stage, the cells have differentiated and cannot be used as embryonic stem cells. These um, fertilized eggs generally come from in vitro fertilization patients that are used in infertility clinics and there's often a surplus of these fertilized eggs that generally get destroyed because the only other options are for the patient to pay out of pocket to preserve these um, fertilized eggs in freezers or the adoption option which is highly unusual um, among patients. So these fertilized cells often just get destroyed anyways. The benefits associated with trauma, disaster, and medical disease um, victims comes from the ability of these stem cells to regenerate into any existing cell they're um, associated with. They've been shown to reduce the inflammatory response in physical trauma and burn victims, which decreases the pain felt by the victim and can also increase their recovery rate. In a case study done by King et al. in 2005, they used stem cell therapy on a 37-year-old woman patient who had been paraplegic for 16 years and saw, um, saw improved motor activity and movement in the hips after only 41 days with no adverse immune responses. Thirdly, embryonic stem cells can be used, show potential to be used, to aid couples that face infertility. According to the U.S. Center for Disease Control Pre Prevention in Atlanta, approximately 10% of American women of childbearing age have trouble getting and or staying pregnant, and more than one-third of infertile couples are a result of medical complications due to the male partner. Also according to the CDC, the data shows that only one-third of assisted fertility programs result in live birth. Recently, Japanese scientists have shown that they can grow um, sperm and egg cells in mice to produce healthy offspring. This was pr printed in an LA Times card article on the 4th of this month. So in conclusion, I believe that stem cells show vital um, need in the medical department and should be used more.
Right, the proposition's identified. It's a little complicated because you've got a justification included in that proposition. The secondary points, on the other hand, are much more clear and distinct. Uh, you do give us a little bit of background about the controversy, although I think that you uh, overgeneralized the source of the controversy being the idea of harvesting um, the stem cells and that people think that they're coming from fetuses. I doubt that that is, in fact, uh, the main source of the controversy on this particular issue. Uh, the issue of of the in vitro clinics and uh, the stem cells there, uh, you know, that's background information, but what inference should we be drawing from that? I think that there is a value argument that you're setting up here and trying to refute without turning it into a value argument, and I think that that's a little bit hard to do. You're walking a fine line on that point. Uh, the secondary points, like I said, were laid out pretty well. You've got a lot of claims about the benefits of uh, stem cell research, and particularly embryonic stem cell research, but the only one that you provide a particular example for and any proof on is the treatment of the paraplegic victim. You've got the one example on that. Other than that, it just seems like there are lots of claims, and I didn't hear very many authorities or examples and certainly no statistics that showed that those things are productive or more productive than uh, the treatments that are currently available. Uh, also, the idea that uh, stem cells have to come from uh, the um, the fertilized eggs, I'm not sure that that is a valid premise in the argument. Uh, it seems to me like there were a couple Nobel Prize winners who got the uh, Nobel Prize for uh, creating or for uh, turning uh, basically adult stem cells into pluripotent cells so that they could accomplish the same things that uh, embryonic stem cells could do. So uh, there may be an issue there that is at the crux of the argument. That's the weak link in that particular chain. Um, the generalizations, I think, are moderate, they aren't uh, particularly strong, um, and the presentation was pretty solid. I thought you did a good job there. All right. Thank you.